Mr Chair. Um, I wanted to speak to clause 28 in part 2 of the bill and note the SOP which refers to some proposed changes in respect of government grants to business, uh, most particularly businesses in the nature of a grant or subsidy to a business, a grant related suspensory loan, uh, advances and the uh, tax treatment of those government grants. And I want to speak in support of government grants to business and uh, the tax treatment of them because that's a very timely issue. As m all members of this House would well know, uh, my city of Christchurch was uh, knocked around very badly by the September 4th earthquake. And there is a very strong need at this point in time for businesses in my CBD, particularly part of my electorate, and across Christchurch and Canterbury. CBD is in my electorate of Christchurch Central. Yes, it is. And we will... We are seeing hundreds and hundreds of businesses that are currently struggling to survive. They have come through the recession. They were coming through the recession and now, through no fault of their own, we had a once in 750 year disaster and the case for government grants and assistance is extraordinarily strong. There is no precedent for what happened in Christchurch. It is acknowledged from the Prime Minister up that this was a once in 750 year event. And the commentary from the Prime Minister and from other ministers in the key led cabinet was that whatever it took to assist Canterbury to get back on its feet would be done. Whatever it took would be done. And yet, Monday of last week, the Minister for Earthquake Recovery, in the face of a number of approaches to him from business organisations for assistance to Canterbury Business, announced a package, a derisory package, which provided 2.5 business mentors. Can, can the member just show me the relevance to part two of his but, comments? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm relating to the Clause 28, which provides under the SOP tax treatment of government grants to business. Government no, grants you. to business. And I say there is a very strong case for businesses in Christchurch to be provided with grants and the tax treatment inherent in this SOP so they can survive, so they can start paying tax again, because those businesses at the moment have suffered a turnover loss of as much as 80 per cent since the September 4th quake. 80 per cent. They need the assistance that this clause envisages. And we are not seeing any assistance. The announcement that came provided a sum of $100,000 to promote Canterbury businesses shared with the good folk of Kaiapoi, $80,000 for Christchurch, when they are needing suspensory loans, when they are needing grants, when they are needing tax assistance as envisaged by this clause. So we've got the tax treatment provided for under this clause, but we aren't getting... And we're not going to see, according to the Minister in the House yesterday, because he says there are thousands of business in Canterbury that are thriving. And I'd like to see a Canterbury member opposite stand up and recite a list of thousands of Canterbury businesses that are thriving that don't need the government support envisaged under this Clause 28 and the tax treatment provided in it because I'm not aware of thousands of Canterbury businesses that are thriving. I'm aware of hundreds and hundreds of Canterbury businesses that are on their knees, that have asked for government support and assistance, as envisaged under this Clause 28, that we would see suspensory loans provided, or we might see a provision of a grant to a business to assist it, most particularly through the Christmas period New Year, when those businesses trying to hang on to staff trying to hang on to staff and pay their holiday pay are doing so in the face of a business environment where they may be only getting one dollar in two of the income they were getting on September the 4th, 4th or worse. And that is why in the legislation the government does provide for the provision of suspensory loans, does provide 
for the provision of grants to assist businesses does provide assistance as envisaged by this clause which provides for the tax treatment of those businesses, Mr Chair. Mr. Chair. So we've got the government acknowledging that it has a role to play and therefore it needs to have appropriate tax treatment where there is the provision of assistance to businesses. And yet we are not seeing the treatment, uh, the assistance to those businesses under the government. We're providing for the tax treatment of it, but we're not seeing the assistance. And the, re the, the actual outcome of this for the Revenue Minister, which he will have to deal with, as hundreds and hundreds of businesses go to the wall, if there is no assistance provided with the appropriate tax treatment provided under Clause 28, is that he will have less revenue. He will have less revenue. And there is another consequence, because there is a sucking sound going on in Canterbury at the moment, particularly in my electorate of Christchurch Central, which is home to the CBD, and the sucking sound is of jobs disappearing. And every person displaced by a business which can no longer afford, because of their turnover being down, because they're not getting any assistance as envisaged under Clause 28 and the tax treatment provided, every person that goes home with their final paycheck, if they get it, is one more person who is, or one fewer person, who is not spending their money, not buying their lunch, not buying a coffee, not buying a cup of tea, not buying a glass of beer after work, not buying a pair of shoes, not shopping in the CBD, and therefore that is further impacting on the viability of those very businesses which are attempting to survive. And they quite rightly look to the government. They know that the government has clauses that provide, as Clause 28 does, for suspensory loans, for grants, for assistance and appropriate tax treatment. They're not asking for inappropriate tax treatment. They're asking for an assistance package that will give them the chance to remain viable and continue employing people. And I ask the question of members opposite, some of whom represent regions like the Waikato, being suff suffering at the moment from another drought. My heart goes out to the farmers of the Waikato. I saw the chap on TV last night in tears. Heart goes out to him. But you have to say that farming comes in cycles, and there are droughts at, that hit farming on a regular basis, and farmers obviously have to do their best to try and provision for those droughts. It's part of the cycle. It is not part of the cycle for businesses in Christchurch, which are hit by a once in 750 year event. They cannot provision for that. They cannot predict it. That is why governments through the ages in New Zealand have been there to assist New Zealanders, assist New Zealand businesses with the appropriate tax treatment as provided under Clause 28, but they are not getting that assistance. And I want to know from members opposite why they're not. And I noted the Minister in the House yesterday talking about thriving, thousands of thriving businesses, suggesting that people were getting perfectly adequate information from the Earthquake Commission. That is not what I am hearing as the member representing Christchurch Central and the CBD. What I am hearing are businesses that are looking to the government for some support and assistance. The government that they, in most instances, probably voted for. They are probably voting for, had voted for the national-led government, believed that they would get a fair deal from the national-led government. Smaller and medium enterprises, like the cobbler who has a shop in the city mall, the brother of the member Aaron Gilmore, I'd like to know if he'd like to see support, support and assistance for his brother and that enterprise. I don't know what his turnover now, downturn now, is, but I'd like to know. Now, I'd like to know whether Aaron Gilmore's brother and his business in City Mall in Christchurch is being affected, whether he'd like to see Clause 28 and its, t and its tax treatment, whether he'd like to see some support and assistance for his business affected in the CBD of Christchurch and the many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of others. I met his father in another cobbler's shop where I was getting my shoes repaired, and I believe that he holds similar sentiments, that it's the role of the government at times of crisis, at times of need, to provide assistance, and it will get appropriate tax treatment under Clause 28 of this bill. It will get appropriate tax treatment, and I wholly support that. But you can't have the appropriate tax treatment if the assistance is not provided, and that's not coming. And there's a deafening silence from national members in Canterbury opposite who are not standing up for their constituents and saying, this is not good enough, Minister Brownlee. This is not good enough. We are seeing viable businesses shed staff 
close their doors when all they need is some support, reassurance and assistance with the appropriate tax treatment provided under Clause 28 of this Bill. And we have seen no stand-up by those members. 